Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday after the Epiphany is the baptism of our Lord, a holy day in the church, and it also happens to be that we will be doing baptisms and confirmations today, in which we celebrate the Holy Spirit's grace by bringing into the fold of the church new members into the body of Christ, which is a holy and apostolic church. We are also on this day beginning to take our first steps uh, in these weeks of the new year in a process to call the next rector of the Episcopal Church of All Saints, which comes with many mixed feelings both excitement and some anxiety about the future and some sadness uh, about saying goodbye. So it's good to remember for these two reasons, if not more, that we, you and I, together are part of a church, an apostolic church that stretches out both before us and also behind us. And that we, you and I, like Chris and other clergy and lay leaders, only say grace over this work for a short time in the great span of God's alpha and omega and God's beginning of creation and the end of all things. We have but a short time to make our mark on the ministry of Christ, which is always before us. So what does this mean to be an apostolic church? To proclaim that on every given Sunday, including today, to proclaim that we are not only holy and Catholic, but that we are indeed apostolic and intend to be so. I want to going to offer, instead of the 150-page thesis on this topic today, just a few points to consider and take away. The first is to be an apostolic church is to recognize that the church is first a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that we make, but instead it flows out of God and the Holy Spirit, and it is part of the work of the Holy Spirit as we outline in the creed on a regular basis. As such, this means that we must work together to discern what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. No single person holds that fullness of truth, but it takes all of us. In an apostolic church, we recognize we're not individuals alone reading Scripture and discerning what is true, but we can't do that. We have to have others surround us. And the wider church is always at work with us, even in our local community. So here at All Saints, we're part of a wider diocesan church and a wider Episcopal church and wider worldwide Anglican communion, which is in fact represented here today. Moreover, that that wider church is not at work today in any one part by itself, but always through the gift of the Holy Spirit looking back at the apostolic church, looking at those who've come before us, and trying to discern through their councils of the whole, that church dating all the way back to the first years after Christ, and that we are taught through their discernment. So we begin there. We don't begin with how we feel today. We actually begin with the ancient church to understand that they saw that scripture was important, that reason and discernment was important as a as a part of the whole that the church itself over the years has thought and prayed over many things. It's only from that vantage point may we, you and I, locate the work that is before any church today. In other words, even the finding and discovering of a new rector to come and lead all saints is based upon a tradition that stretches far, far back. 
We do not begin with what we see today in order to proof text our own desired outcomes. But instead, we depend on one another. So we're an apostolic church because of how we listen to the Holy Spirit. That's point number one, if you're counting. So second point is this. We're an apostolic church because we participate in the Episcopal laying on of hands and the prayers for the Holy Spirit from one generation to the next generation. The hands that were laid upon me, the hands that confirmed me, that baptized me, are deeply linked with other people whose hands have over the years connected us. And so as we baptize today and confirm, so these people physically, each one of you will be physically knitted evermore into the apostolic church. And it means that priests and deacons who serve here in this place and within our wider church and communion had had those same hands laid upon them. The Holy Spirit would act making some bishops, priests, and deacons in turn baptized as all part of the sacramental life of an apostolic church. In short, to be an apostolic church means that we're people who believe that there is some power in coming together, praying for one another, laying hands on one another, and asking for the Holy Spirit to continue to uphold people in their life in Christ. We believe that sacramental life has power for us, and it helps us locate ourselves wherever we might be. It's as if it were a giant sacramental GPS system that allows us to remember no matter how far we may stray or we may walk in our kind of fumbling towards faithfulness, There is a place always to return, whether it is our own remembrances of baptism and confirmation, or it is the weekly Eucharist and the community of prayers. What this reminds us of is that this uh, is, is not our ministry that is being undertaken, but ultimately God's work in this place. And so we can move on to our third point, The third part of being an apostolic church is handing the church off to the next generation of leaders, to the next generation of baptized people and clergy. We primarily do this by undertaking the following. We commit to continue our lives and to raise others up to understand the importance of the apostolic teaching, which I mentioned above. And that does not happen naturally. It's not like you can just kind of get it by hanging around. It actually has to be taught. We have to be formed. We have to learn. We have to experiment in our lives as Christians. It will not happen naturally, but as the driver last night invited me to pray to be a good Christian, we need a lot of helping hands along the way. And what is also true is that it will be your responsibility as baptized and as a newly confirmed in time to take your place in the leadership of this church. Many, many years ago, Mother Hill was seen by a member of your congregation and she drew a little sketch of her as as an acolyte and questioned whether or not someday she might be a priest in God's church. Generation after generation, we pass this ministry down. The culture that we teach is not one of the world, as Fleetwood Mac might try to convince us to go our own way. But the church, the Apostolic Episcopal Church, teaches us to lean towards one another. The church has never been pure and holy and without its own fallenness. I know that's news to all of you. (laughs) Even I, as your bishop, as hard as I try, will disappoint you from time to time. It is our nature, but it is also our faith that all we have to do is own what is ours 
ask for forgiveness of God, forgiveness of our neighbor, and try to move forward again together. So to be apostolic is to pray for one another, that our wrongs may always be mended, and that we might have a little bit of strength to undertake our life day to day as Christians. This is what it means to proclaim that we are holy and apostolic, to participate with all the saints, those who've come before, those in our midst, and those yet to come. Finally, it is in this way that we may say thank you to those who have come before us. And you have done a wonderful job of saying thank you to Chris and to Pat. A priest of this apostolic church who has served you faithfully and pastorally over the many years. But we should remember his lessons well, for he also taught us how to be an apostolic church. And that is where much of it, more than any one person's belief, comes to bear. He's been a faithful teacher and a wise counselor. He's baptized you and blessed your marriages. He's He's raised his arms in victory with you and labored with you in the trenches while burying your dead. He has preached the gospel and celebrated the sacraments faithfully. The truth is, none of our gratefulness can do justice to the goodness and life that he and Pat have brought to this congregation. It's just too big an impact. But what we can do is continue, all saints, here in Fort Worth and its ministry faithfully as he has so taught us to do. It is also true, though difficult, to come to terms with the fact that our own ministries in any one place have beginnings and endings. And this is indeed an ending for an apostolic leadership while it is the beginning and continuation of yours. God does intend more for him just as God intends more for you. As the author of Ecclesiastes points out as they uh, bemoan the seasons and the times, the seasons of toil and the seasons of rest, they remark and say this, so I saw that there is nothing better than that all should enjoy their work, for that is their lot. Who can bring them to see what will be after them? So as we move forward, our hope springs from the church that stretches out behind us. And maybe we could enjoy our work together, even as we fumble forward. But Christ goes with us, and I will, and someday, perhaps for some, too long from now, hang up my own hat, but I hope I will have been faithful to you and that we will have a continuing good relationship as a small part of God's great apostolic church. So it is today, as every day in our church, we celebrate, we baptize, confirm, and break bread and recognize there is yet in our midst a new generation who will in time become the new face of a very ancient but faithful apostolic church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.